Arsenal back top of the league after a 3-1 win over Chelsea. There was a late consolation goal for the West Londoners, but a comfortable night overall for Mikel Arteta and Arsenal. After four really poor results on the bounce, a reaction was needed tonight from Arsenal Football Club and their fans got that in spades. You know, up three goals early, won the game with consummate ease, a, a, a standout, standout performance in the contrast of everything that has gone on recently. Maybe a little frustration that they didn't put sort of a, th a fourth and a fifth and a sixth past them later on in the game. I think that's absolutely fair to say. I think some Gooners would have wanted a few more goals to have been scored to really kind of dig the knife into a Chelsea team, by the way, that are now six defeats from six. Six defeats from six under Frank Lampard. You can see we scroll down, still in 12th position now, but Bournemouth closing in, Wolves closing in, West Ham in 15th closing in on, you know, Chelsea, a club of their size. I mean, what a catastrophic season. I'm sure their fans cannot wait for the next four games to be done so they can bury their heads for a few weeks and then get behind whoever the new manager is going to be at their football club. But as I say, Arsenal go top, but there are those two games in hand for Manchester City. Hopes and prayers now of, of slip-ups, draws or defeats for Man City are what Arsenal need. But the most important thing for them for two reasons. One, they've got to keep winning just in case there is a mistake and a slip-up. They've got to be ready to pounce. But on top of that, I think very much what Arsenal need to do is go out on the sea, go out of the season on a high. Yeah, the fans already, the fans are already devastated. The fans are already upset. The fans are already annoyed that it fell away in, in the way in which it did. It wasn't the last couple of games. It wasn't, you know, away to Newcastle and you know, away to a Brighton. It was leads that shouldn't have been thrown away. It was performances that shouldn't have come. Not even the city game, but the three that preceded it. But go out the season on a high. Go out on the, go out, finish the season as you mean to continue next year. Buy a well in the summer and say, listen, we didn't end it exactly how we wanted to, but there has been progression. We have made it to another milestone. And next year, try your best to go one better. You know, if I'm a United fan, if I'm looking at it from that perspective, that is what I would want now. Go out with an element of respect, an element of style, and an element of class. Don't fumble over the line now and have Newcastle or United close points on you. Get your wins, finish in a very comfortable second, and, and, and kind of go again and rebuild from that point. In terms of tonight's game, look, I, there's a few things that stood out to me. Arsenal were very good, moved the ball well, they pressed well. Very, very good performance from them. There's, there's no doubt about it. It was a very, very good performance. Electric in the build-up. I thought Jorginho held the ball magnificently well in the middle, really controlled that midfield area. I thought that Trossard had another brilliant game, another brilliant game in an Arsenal shirt. Jesus tonight was absolutely electric in the way in which that he attacked and the way he kind of conducted himself on the pitch. I thought Kivior, maybe this kid should have come in a few weeks back because I thought he had a consummate, professional, an unnervy display. And some will say, well, it's Chelsea, they're rubbish. But we saw the way Holding and the like performed against Southampton and against West Ham, who were not that much better than Chelsea. So him tonight, I thought, was a standout performance. And maybe if Mikel Arteta had been a little braver, maybe if Mikel Arteta didn't have, he kind of stuck in his ways with some of his favourites, that may have happened a little bit sooner and the results could have been different, but that's what you learn from and you move from those points. I thought Saka still tonight wasn't, wasn't at his brilliant best. Um, and I think maybe, I think dropping Martinelli was the wrong move. I actually think Saka maybe should have been on the bench. But of course, Odegaard tonight, Captain Odegaard for Arsenal, a brace from him. He really stepped up this evening, ensured they won this, this, this London derby, ensured they got back on track for this season as best they can. And overall, I think a really good performance from the Gooners. I can only look at this from an outsider looking in. Maybe not adding the fourth and the fifth and the sixth goal. There'll be a little, a little bit of frustration there from Arsenal fans because it could have been a thumping and an absolute embarrassing tonight of Chelsea Football Club. But I think overall, most Gooners will be proud of their team's response tonight. They want to go out on a high, as I, as I say, and kind of go from that point. Uh, Super chat here from uh, Plasma Fam 12 Thank you very much. Such an amazing donation to the show. Thank you. He says, J20 um, making Partey earn his spot back. And look, this is where you live and learn. And I think Mikel Arteta, 
this isn't an excuse, but it's a fact. Everyone that hates him will say it's an excuse, but I think it's a fact. He's three years, three and a half years into his managerial career. He's made some mistakes in this campaign that if he learns from next year with an improved squad, Arsenal could be even better. They could be even better uh, than we've seen them be this year. And I think, I think again, J20, he had a very good game. I, again, I believe he should have played more football in recent weeks. Maybe that would have helped. Uh, why brought Partey on once he came in, gave away a free kick. Jorginho was fantastic. It, look, you've got, you've got a big game this Sunday against Newcastle, which you'll want to win. Absolutely. Who knows what is going to happen to City in the next two games? They're probably going to win, but you can't play your games like they're probably going to win. He took G Jorginho off, give him a little bit of rest, ready for that weekend um, performance, which needs to be, which needs to be, a, um, a, needs to be a top, 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 top level. It does. I want to say again, thank you. Uh, a wonderful donation uh, and the amount. Thank you very much, sir, for that. Uh, you all laughed at me when I said uh, we could get relegated, sell them, sell them all. Lampard, please stop coaching next year. Go uh, next year to go one better top half finish. Yeah, like, I just don't think Chelsea will get relegated looking at the table because there's just too many teams that are as bad or worse than you right now. And you've got those 39 points. If there was four or five games more, Chelsea would go down. I, I genuinely believe it. Their players have no fight to be in this position. You know, I said before, if you're a poor kid like me and you grow up and earn a little bit of money and then you lose that money, you can cope while you're catching your bearings and coming back to the top. You can cope with it. If you're born with a silver spoon in your mouth, you've only ever been wealthy and you lose that money. Suddenly you've got to, you know, live in a one bedroom bedsit with, you know, with a paraffin heater and a mousetrap for company. That's a lot harder for you to fight your way through because it's an alien environment. And these Chelsea fans right now, for me, are in an absolutely alien environment. They don't know how to perform. They don't know how to hold themselves together. And as soon as they can see the goal, they capitulate. And they fought back a little bit in the second half, but Arsenal went into first gear and just said, right, we'll sit back a little bit. We'll move the ball around. We don't need to exhaust ourselves. And, and they got back into the game. But overall, a very poor performance again from Chelsea. But that's what happens when Lampard's down. I actually want to play this clip. I want to play this clip to you. Take a little listen to this. One of the candidates is Julian Nagelsmann. Yes. What has he got that the legend that is Frank Lampard, the Chelsea legend that is Frank Lampard, has not? A guy that knows the club inside out. Yeah. A guy mm. that Chelsea fans think the world of. What has Nagelsmann done? OK, one... Bundesliga, but he'd be hard pushed not to as coach of Yes, a minute coach. Yeah, yeah, you'd be but hard pushed. But nothing else. Not to. No, so, no. So, what makes him preferable, do we think? Is it because he is I German? Know, I know what you're going to say. I knew, I knew young? You, well, Frank. It's not because he's young, not because he rides a skateboard, it's not because he's German. It is purely and simply because Nangelsmann, whether you think he's a world class coach, the next Pep Guardiola, whether he's got the ability to win Premier Leagues, whether he's got the ability to do that is one thing. But he is exponentially better than Frank Lampard. And that's the problem here that Chelsea have got. They, they, they made a massive mistake bringing in um, Graham Potter. But on top of that, on top of that mistake, they've brought back in one of the worst managers in the world. One win in 20 in his last 20 games. This guy is going, this guy is going for Jadon Sancho 007. No wins, no draws, seven defeats. If he loses the next game, he's literally taking Jaden Sancho 007. That will forever belong to Frank Lampard. It's an absolute madness. Um, I'm, am I the only one who thought we, Arsenal, were poor today? Luckily, Chelsea are awful. Uh, do you know what, mate? I'll get called an Arsenal lover. I thought you were great up until about the 60th minute, 70th minute, 70th, 65th minute. And then you just kind of started to fall away. Then On purpose. You just sat, sat back, they had the ball a bit. The game was dead. Sometimes when a team goes 3-0 up so quickly, the spark can go out of a game. And you tried to keep it alive at the beginning of the second half, but then you knew the game was won. You conceded a goal. Zinchenko switched off. But I don't necessarily think you were poor, if that makes sense. I don't necessarily think you were poor. Um, good performance. Um, Arsenal were in second gear in the second half. I just said that, yeah. Uh, slow and sloppy first 10 to 15 minutes. Kivior was good. Man of the match was Jorginho or Odegaard. Fans are tried to shine a laser on Mudrik. Disgraceful. Can those lasers actually hurt you? Um, if they can't hurt you, then it's obviously a little bit of fun, but I, I appreciate you saying that, my friend. Uh, who wants to beat Chelsea? Sorry, who wants to bet Chelsea are going to be the deciding factor 
of where the Premier League goes. I see a shock defeat in Chelsea beating City, which allows Arsenal to pull away. Jay, I love that optimism. I personally can't see it. I I'll, I'll save that one for the panel when they come on. We won the second half, announced Poch immediately. Mate, they need to sack Lampard tonight and bring Poch in tomorrow morning. I can't believe it hasn't been done already. Um, April finally finished. Wins are finally back is what AA says. That's true for Arsenal. It's literally been a month. The 1st of April was the last win. That's crazy that they went with, Arsenal didn't win for a month. Uh, Chelsea will be much better next season. Operation, avoid relegation. This is in full throttle. Yeah, they'll avoid it, but I get you there. Uh, why? Oh, I've already done that one there about party. Why did Frank actually do... What did he actually do in this match? He just sat there and looked into space. All of us lot here can do that. Like he made... This is what's crazy. He made Kante press. And Kante's pressing led to all the holes that Arsenal were exploiting. It was crazy. What, what Chelsea should be doing under Lampard is sitting back, being very compact, be very hard to break down, be almost negative, pragmatic in a way, and just try and see games through. When they try and press an attack, they just get picked off. They really, really do. It was such a poor attempt from him tactically tonight. Uh, there's no doubt. Uh, talk on us, group of clowns barring silver. So sad. Yeah, already said that, my friend. I agree. Be honest, Terry, you have been waiting so long to be able to have the title Arsenal smash insert uh, again after a bad sequel of games. I don't really think about it like that, Jimmy. For me, like, I just report on the games and what happens, win, lose or draw on any of the top six teams. It's what I do, brother. Um, it's what I do. Uh, this here says uh, that was your chance of re to revenge the 6-0. You blew it. By the way, did you see... This, we scored a goal. The song, we scored a goal. How bad must it be? We scored a goal. Yeah, I, he I hear you there. Uh, statements don't make sense. Frank sucks. I hear you, my friend. I, and he does. And look, I don't, I'm not one of these rivals that's going to, he's ruining his legacy because I don't think Ch he could do that. But he has got to walk away. I think he has to hand his resignation in tonight. Bra, Arteta's in-game management is crap. Dropped Saka, but Trossard, excuse me, and hook Zinni at half time every game is what LJ Brown says here. Uh, Chelsea did the achievable. They only make Spurs look good. Uh, I don't see Chelsea getting another win. Yeah, I don't think any Chelsea fan does. But the problem is it mean, you need everyone in relegation and below them to win the majority of their games. And they all play each other. There's just not enough. If there were, again, if there was another four or five games left additional. Chelsea would get relegated this year. That's how bad they are. Uh, save this for the panel. Where's Chelsea finishing next year? I'll save that one as well. Don't worry. Uh, spell Chelsea backwards and it says relegation. Um, even as a dyslexic, I'm not falling for that one, but it's funny, David. Legitimately, that is a funny, funny loop, uh, super chat uh, because Lampard is a media darling. Well, as we just seen there with the Richard Keys and the Richard Keys video, he 100% is a media darling, but I don't understand why he's a media darling because he's awful. You know, maybe he'll be a good assistant manager. Maybe he'll be a good DOF. Maybe he'll, he'll do something else in football. But management, he's never going to get another job in management again at this level. I love your show, Terry, from Malibu. Big up yourself down there, over there, and down there in uh, Malibu. I hope, hope the weather's good. Hope you're having a good time, my friend. Um, Chelsea will beat City 1-0. Can you imagine? That would be one of the biggest upsets of the season based on where both teams are right now and the context. Uh, time to bring out my panel now, my people. Please make sure like buttons are being smashed. Make sure you're subscribing to the Football Terrace as well. I'm going to try and bring them all out. Let's do this. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Who did I miss? No, I think I got everyone. Um, well, oh, not a gal. A gal's there. Uh, welcome back to the show, everyone. I want to go to Jess first of all. Um, good win. Uh, three goals past them very early. A little bit lackadaisical in the second half, but mm. I suppose you're just happy to be back to winning ways tonight. Yeah, that was a typical Arsenal performance from this season, I think. Um, I don't like we score a lot of goals. We we look really good. And then we have like one moment of just like poor defending. We're harshly punished for it. And then we're upset because we didn't get a clean sheet. It's kind of what we do most of the times at home. But what I will say is it doesn't matter how we won today. We just needed to win that game for a lot of Gooners, I think, looked a lot more difficult on paper because of what we had done in the last four games than actually ended up being. And surprise, surprise, you show up, 
you play well, you defend well, and you win. Like, we, we should be easily beating this Chelsea team right now. So I think all in all, like, we played really well, had one moment of, like, you know, where Zinchenko switched off, and that was pretty much it. So I'm happy that we're kind of back on track and we can kind of restart and maybe see the team play with some freedom. But, um, yeah, I think Arteta made a good decision to drop some players. I think Jorginho made a good account of himself, a player that's been underused since he's been in the team or at the club. Like, why do you bring in a player with that level of experience and you're not playing him? Trissard had a good game. I think he was unlucky to be um, taken off. And um, uh, Kivior where I know a lot of people will say it was the opposition, but what a difference it makes when you just have a competent Premier League level defender back there. Like sometimes it's just about the confidence and like not having somebody back there that encourages, you know, anxiety. And it was just so obvious to see that we just needed to make a a change. And I love Arteta. Everybody knows that, but he had choices and that choice probably should have came earlier. So I'm glad he got to it now, but it still may be too late, depending on what happens with Gabrielle. But good game, good three points, you know, some really nice goals in there. And I think the next step for this Arsenal team is when you're on top of a team like that and you have them three nil, you know, like that, you have to get four, get five, get six, put the game fully out of their out of their reach and just move on from there. But I'm happy about the performance. I really am. I know it doesn't seem like it, but I am. (laughs) I get what you mean. Like it's, I don't expect Arsenal fans to be jumping from the rooftops because of the last four matches. Um, I expect there to be more of a, we came back, it, you know, with a good result. I saw you, Gal this week talk about what is a bounce back. I think tonight is a bounce back, would you say? Terry, I wanted seven. Honestly, I felt like when they scored three, we could have, we could have done more. We could have, punish them even more. I felt like after we scored the third goal, we kind of did what we usually do and say, you know what? kind of gave them a little mercy we gave them a free, we gave them a pass i honestly believe it could have been five nil uh, instead of instead of instead of three one at times we weren't we weren't as clinical and to say that after the the performance that we had in the first couple minutes i just want to shout out some people granite Xhaka, shout out to him hat trick of assists i didn't think he would ever get to this money goal contributions in a season and what he's been doing this season you got to give him credit martin odegaard get back in a brace uh, that was a good performance from him. When you look at um, the fact that Gabriel Jesus has been injured for majority of the season and still somehow got 10 plus league goals this season so far, that's that's another thing that deserves some praise. And then go back to Mikel Arteta and what we said before the, the game against, uh, what do you call it, Southampton, before the game against um, Man City, we asked for some changes. Today, he made those changes and those changes you see in the impact that it made. This is what you do. The Zerbi showed... You don't need to have world-class players in all these different positions. You don't need to have a team full of class players on the bench. All you need to do is utilize your bench when need be to to push and motivate other players. Guess what? Some of the top teams in this this league, like Pep Guardiola's team, uh, Man City, they they take people off just to know how how they're going to act in training the next day. So we got to start doing that. Mikel Arteta has to be more ruthless with his substitutions and his and his and his rotations. And today it was it was a good time to rotate. I don't think this Chelsea team is that good. So I'm not here to celebrate like like crazy. To be honest, I treated this game going into it the same way I would treat the game against Bournemouth. If we lost, I would have been embarrassed. And and, and if we win, I'm not going to over celebrate. Yeah, I understand the over uh, not over celebrating. And I also said in the build up, you I don't know if you were backstage or not, but. I think there'll be an element of disappointment that the fourth and the fifth goal didn't come in, but that's just also like a greed thing. Like we're playing Chelsea in a few weeks at Old Trafford and on a personal level, I hope Lampard's there and I hope that we can slap them up. But at the same time, I, you know, I, I'll take a one nil. I take a I'm more disappointed, Terry, that we conceded to Chelsea. Yeah. Well, at least... Terry, football yeah, gods. Football gods. Yeah, yeah. I, I hear yes. you on that. Um, Souls is here with us. How are you feeling as a gooner tonight, bro? Uh, I'm not going to lie, a bit deflated. Um, again, you know what it is, right? I know we won, but it's like, now that you know the foolish period, we take April Fool's a bit too literally, and we make ourselves look like fools every April. Now that that's over, we're going to start performing. You know what's even more disappointing? Now that he made the changes, you could see how much control we had in this game for the large majority of the game. Kibio came in, played well. My annoyance comes from, why didn't this happen earlier? Why didn't this happen against Southampton? Why didn't this happen against West Ham? Why didn't it happen against Man City? And why now? Now that the pressure's off, you now want to make these big calls. This isn't bravery. This isn't 
you know, making decisions when it matters. This is the easiest option he could have done. It was so blatantly obvious he could have rotated in this game. I needed him to do it when it really mattered. I know people are going to sit there and be, why are we being harsh? But we've we've legit bottled it. And a lot of Arsenal fans can't call it out for what it is. We've bottled those last four games. And now we've performed. Now we kick on. I want to see this against Newcastle. You've got to still be ruthless. This isn't, oh, you've won now, so that's it. We ease off Arteta. The pressure's on the manager because he's the one picking these players. He's the one that's picking the lineup. And now I want to see him continue being ballsy, continue to sit there and go, you're not performing, so you're off. And it has to be, I'm going to be honest with you, Bakayo Saka has to be dropped. His performances lately haven't been to the level, whether it's tiredness, whether it's just form, whether it's mentality, whether it's the pressure's gotten to him, whatever the reason is, he has to be dropped. I need to see a reaction from him. He's had it too easy. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, look at Martinelli when he came on. You could see, okay, there was a bit more energy about him. You know, Gabriel Jesus was like looking at that team and going, shit, okay, he's made rotations. I better get my goal. He got his chance and he scored. You know, there was a potential for him to set up a second goal when he kind of held on to Thiago Silva. Good hold-up play, good centre-forward play. And he looked more like himself today. So clearly certain players are getting that kick up the backside. Now it's over to Zinchenko. Now he's the next player I've got my eyes on. Because this is now the third time in a row he's switched off for a goal. Or maybe even the fourth game in a row he's switched off for goals. It's not even like, you know... It's a, it wasn't even a lack of awareness. The man saw Mudieke make that run and goes, ah, go on then, you can make that run if you want. That's just not on. It's not on. And you know the other thing I'm disappointed about? Why the hell do we keep getting cocky once we're up? We've done it against Liverpool. We've done it against West Ham. Southampton just didn't let us get cocky because they scored in 25 seconds. Otherwise, we would have got cocky in that game as well. And look at what happens. We start conceding. We start... The other team starts getting control of games. I don't care about this win, to be completely honest with you. I'm, I'm very, very disappointed it took this long. And the lesson I wanted them to learn was to humble themselves in this game. And they've done the complete opposite. They got their early lead. They got their 3-0 up. And then guess what they did? Oh, way too good for this team. And then they concede. That needs to be cut out. That has to be cut out. Because if you do that against Newcastle, that's a 3-3, 4-3 potentially. We're just lucky we came across Chelsea because that could have ended very, very differently against the likes of Brighton. That could end this differently against the likes of Newcastle. So we need to cut those out. This is just me being constructive criticism because I'm treating this team like they're contenders for the title. I'm not going to treat them like they're a top four team. And this is exactly how people need to be responding. Mate, I, I think there's so much truth in what you said there. Of course, we are going to move on to talking um chelsea in this, this reaction as well people so make sure you're staying with us make sure you're hitting the like button as well uh brandon I, i've seen a, a few people on twitter with a similar thoughts to souls you know also talking about kivior he's shown tonight that we we did have other options up rather than holding and by the way when i say we had other options i'm uh repeating their tweets i'm not speaking about it as if i'm an arsenal fan in case anyone uh, gets triggered in the comment section but it's tonight almost bittersweet because you won and played well and it, maybe if you'd have made these changes sooner the title race would still be on yeah they got going souls i couldn't say it any better myself let's start with chelsea right 3-1 that looked respectable that was not respectable at all we battered them absolutely cleared them out in the first half um chelsea they're very lucky that there's not four or five games more than what there actually is left of the season or was if I was a Chelsea fan I'd be very very fearful of getting relegated because that's how poor they are at the moment they are terrible absolutely terrible I couldn't believe what I was watching from them to be honest with you um I thought Odegaard man of the match man of the match performance um two great goals from him Trossard was excellent Jesus as well uh Granit Xhaka you know a gal's already pointed out with a with a hat-trick of assists Jorginho controlled the midfield really really well uh, Kivior had a good game, but I wouldn't be getting too gassed about that because at the end of the day, he was playing, he was up against a, a finished Bamiang who had six touches in the entire game, um, and up against Kai Havertz, who, let's be honest, is not a striker. So I'd like to see more from him um, in, in the next couple of games before I go saying, yes, yeah, you know, good player, whatever. Uh, but yeah, good game from him. Hopefully that'll give him a bit of confidence. 
However, again, I'm going to go back to what Saul said. Where was this, you know, over the last couple of weeks when it actually mattered? Where was it? And I'm not just talking about, you know, the players either. I'm talking about the manager. Like Saul's already pointed out, these changes should have happened weeks ago. Now, all of a sudden, no pressure FC, and we're not expected to go on and win the league title. Man City are the favourites, and we we turn up again. It's not good. <coughs> It really isn't, you know, and you, you have to have a certain amount of constructive criticism as well. And I'm sure Arteta will, you know, be relaying this to the squad as well. You have to constru uh, constructively criticise in order to improve. And we as fans have to do the same thing. And again, Saul's pointed it out just a minute ago. I'm going to point it out. Zinchenko, when are we going to start having a conversation about this guy and his defending? Awful. Switched off again. And as Saul's pointed out, that's what, three times in the last four weeks? You know what I mean? And it's not all it's not about his positioning either. Like this guy just he's just not a very good defender at all. And unfortunately, you know, you're 3-0 up, you're cruising, that happens. And if Chelsea were a better side with more confidence, we'd probably be worried in that last 20 minutes. All because of a stupid error. It's just, he's got to improve on that. Mikel Arteta as well, like, like Sauls, again, has already pointed out, he's got to start being ruthless with this squad. And look, there's always hope. And I still have hope. And I know all the rest of the Arsenal fans on the panel have hope that hopefully Manchester City can drop points and we can continue to win games. I don't personally see City dropping any points. But... All we've got to do now is continue to do our job. Go to Newcastle on Sunday and make sure you get a win. I, I hear you on that, mate. And, I, and I listen, as I say, I get the frustration um, after what you've been through um, in, in, in recent weeks. I want to do some of the super chats here before speaking to more of our brilliant panel tonight. First one says uh, Lampard is a special op. His mission, operation, get Chelsea relegated. Only the best can complete such a mission, is what so YUFC says. Uh, this one says all of a sudden Igao is back. Victor, Igao is here after all the Arsenal draws and defeats recently, to be fair to him. So uh, let's, let's let that uh, be said. Uh, Jay here says um, it would just be Chelsea's luck this season with all of the teams that they beat City. Can you imagine their fans if they helped their London rivals win the league by taking points? Lampard's first Chelsea win. I, I, is there a single Chelsea fan on this panel that thinks that's going to happen? Or any We're going to get... We're going to get absolutely destroyed by City. Do you think Arsenal should have done it tonight? City will press our neck and it will be worse than the 6-0 under Surrey. That's what it will be. Wow. That's a, that's a big, that is a big, big call there from Winter Surfer. Uh, Frank is an awful manager. Don't get me wrong, but at least he came and sought out our season during the most turbulent of times. Is that praise there for Lampard? Um, for coming here and taking the money? And... Wow. Um, that's an interesting one there, Curious. Uh, Raheem Monzo uh, Sterling out here looking like uh, Dak, is it Dex, Dexter Daps? I don't know who that is, but there, there we go. Uh, Declan Fried Rice to score the winner against City tomorrow. I mean, that will excite the Arsenal fans more. If they were to lose tomorrow at home, it would be a suddenly it'd be, oh, we, we won. Um, Arsenal fans, why are you not mad at your team for not going 5 0 up? I think some of the gooners are good. I think gooners have mentioned yeah, that. Said to, be that. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, and I, I think. It's a weird. It's hard to be annoyed when you win games completely. Um, but I do, I I do get where you're coming. I get where you're coming from, Debbie. But they have said it. A pretty decent goal of the month for May uh, for Midwaki. To be fair, obviously talking from a Chelsea perspective. Before anybody gets triggered by that, um, if you have friends, you don't need a UA for badges, is what Idris says. It's very true. And have to say, shocking Arsenal fans shining a laser at Mudrik. Uh, we are trash. Can't believe we scored. Zinchenko is a liability. Um, can see why Pep sold him is what Sean uh, Newlands has got to say here. Uh, before we move on and talk a bit more about Chelsea, um, Dords, what's your reaction to tonight, mate? You wanted a, 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 you said on on the, on the top six show you were going to humble Chelsea tonight. Do you feel you humbled Chelsea this evening? Well, that first half performance, I said on the football terrace last night, yesterday, sorry, the game will be done by half time. I said we should score minimum two or three goals by half time. We did exactly what I said, and I'm 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 actually very very um, 
I, I, I believe Man City might drop points, okay? Some of you guys might think City can win every single game, but they only need to lose one and draw one. That are the next, what, seven? They've got six, seven games left. So I've still got hope. Win all our rest of our games. And we just hope that City drop points against Brentford away or Brighton away. They've got West Ham. I think they'll beat West Ham comfortably. But going back to the game, yeah, I also asked if I was disappointed we couldn't score more in the second half. But there was a lot of rotation. There was a lot of players going off the pitch. So I wasn't very, very disappointed. And our back four was a makeshift back four. And Chelsea, if Chelsea, we can just expect them, but they still score goals in most of their games. Um, they've got a good attacking lineup. Um, Hold on, no, no. They have they have one goal in April. We one scored thirty. We always okay, we always concede. We always concede at home anyway. We we, we I think we've only kept like two or three clean sheets. So scoring against us at the Emirates is not a big achievement anyway. We, we always concede against the top teams, against the bottom teams. So it's not a big achievement. But don't say but they have. Go back to the game. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, going back to the game. I don't know why there's any negativity. Okay, we've we've tried our best. We've dropped points against Liverpool. We've dropped points against City. Okay. But come on, finishing second by if we finish second by one point, yeah, I'd be heartbroken we didn't win the title. But come on, we'll go next season, sign a couple of quality players and go again in the summer. So Dude, I'm I'm, I'm very eight, I'm very, Dude, very excited for next season. Dude, we was eight points clear with nine games to go, mate. We was, 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 gonna we was, be we're never gonna we're never gonna win ten games in a row. Uh, Dude, in the last, the eight last points games clear with nine games to go, and we drop points against Southampton, West Ham. Yeah, games that we yeah. should be winning. West Ham, West West Ham. What what West Ham this season? Southampton are bottom of the league, bro. Don't don't come with that crap. No, no man. Yeah? No, 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 no. Okay, no, can I on, can I on, pop bro. in here really quick? I just feel like this conversation that we're continuously have, like we get it, like we're not happy. We bottled our lead, blah 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 blah. But like we won a game and we have a couple of games left, and I think there needs to be a focus, like. How many times are we going to go back and forth and, oh, we were up by eight points and, oh, my gosh, West Ham, Southampton, those games are over. I think we spend way too much time on wins. We spend way too much time on losses. We need to move on. Like, we can go over that at the end of the season again about how it didn't happen or whatever. But, like, we just won a game. We can criticize some of the parts of the performance, but I just don't understand why we keep going over it. Like, we've had so many conversations over the last – five, six days about how we, we're not going to win this league. So I don't know why we have to keep doing it. If Dodds, if he wants to be deluded and say that we're going to win the league, just let him do I it. Didn't, I, didn't say, I didn't say we're going to win the league. I didn't Whatever, say we're that we have a chance. Yeah. That we yeah, have a chance. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. just let him do it. Like, I don't understand. He'll either be right or wrong. Got to move on. Move you know what it is? This, these moments, I just want to one more thing. These moments, they don't come every season. Like, challenge for the title. This is the first time we've challenged for the title since, what, 2008. So... I'm enjoying this moment. I'll see what it takes me to the end. In the end, if we don't win it, then I'll be critical about what happened. But for now, I'm enjoying the ride. Anything's possible, okay? They need to drop two, uh, what is it, four points. That's it. So it's not a massive mountain to climb. I'm I'm having my hopes up. We've got five games left or four games left and anything can happen. Can you know what? Just, keep they, they, pressure. They, they, hang on. One hang second. On. I just want to say this. There's nothing wrong with saying we should keep pressure on City. That's all I want. I think I all of us here want us to go and win the remaining games and keep pressure on City in the case that something happens. I don't think I don't think that was saying we're going to go on and win it. To to have hope just means continue to believe in your team to win all these games as we all want our team to win the remaining five or four games that are remaining. And if we can do that, even if we don't win the league, we can look back and say, you know what, we lost it against City and next season we have to at least get something off them home and away. And that's and that's that's where we can look at and say, you know what, that's where we lost it. But yeah, it is what it is. I, I hear where you're coming from there. In in terms of Chelsea tonight, boys. Um, and sorry, Staffy, are, are you here to talk more Chelsea or more, um, or more uh, Arsenal? I'm not gonna lie. I just thought about hopping on because I didn't think any Chelsea fans would show their faces. But big up to these three that showed up because they have more balls than than half these people who didn't show up. But yeah, I'm, I guess I'm here to defend Chelsea a little bit for whatever's left in them. You know, do my good deed for today. Don't bother, man. Fair they fair don't enough. deserve defending. If they're going to say don't bother. Um, David, I, I know you didn't expect to beat Arsenal tonight, but the tactics looked all over the place. Kante's pressing and leaving holes. It, you know, he's, he's starting some of the wrong people. 
Abamyang pulled out the cold for some psychological warfare that he might it might get under the skin of Gunas. Lampard now is six and zero. Oh. Six games, sorry, zero oh and six. Six games, no wins, six defeats. Surely, I mean, talk to me about the game first of all. How bad was it, or is this just a case of Lampard's got to be sacked tonight? Uh, um, I mean, Lampard could be sacked tonight. I don't really care. It's the issue. <laughs> like, what am I sacking him for? Unless, unless literally Poch comes in tomorrow, I see no point. We're not going to get relegated. We're not going to do anything. Like, the game is pretty mute because the game is the same as it is always. Oh, we played well in patches. Could, could have got battered. Didn't get battered. I actually scored a goal tonight, which kind of... That was shocked me a lot because I left the room to get to get dinner and then I saw a notification on my phone three one I was like oh he's got a goal oh you got <laughs> it's the little it's the little wins the little wins the little wins we actually scored tonight um, but yeah now nah, overall I mean there's not much to say I'm just focused on next season there's like like I'm I'm here showing face because I feel like I owe Terry a bit of my time just to show my face <laughs> and say like Chelsea oh, are here. That. Like, like, but there's nothing else for me to talk about because it is what it is right now. Like, Bravo. there's just nothing I, else. I, I hear you. And out, in, out of your football depression, don't down that dilute and orange without putting water in it first. It's on your seat, bro. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't do it to yourself. Don't do it. That's double strength. It's double strength as well. <laughs> I, I bet. I bet. Um, Matt's here with us. Oh, we ain't spoke for a few weeks. Things haven't got better. <laughs> oh, oh, things. Double oh seven. Double oh seven is essentially on its way. Mate, you know, I, I I told everyone about this, Terry. I, I said to him, you know, Lampard will make us worse. Lampard will make us a relegating team. They'll make us look like, you know, a Crystal Palace. They'll make us look like a bottom six team. Like, this is not Chelsea. And fans accepting, like, you know, I understand, you know, it's all jokes and banter, but accepting, you know, one goal from being, being scored and they're celebrating positives on Twitter, it's just an absolute embarrassment. Frank Lampard is a disgrace to this football club. He's ruined his legacy by coming as a manager in the second term. Now, I understand oh, we're in the middle of the season, or oh, he came and support us. I couldn't care what it is. I'm sorry, we should have stuck with Graham Potter. There was no point sacking Graham Potter for Frank Lampard. You, you, you're sacking shit for garbage. Frank Lampard has made us look worse. Terrible. Horrendous. The people that, and, and this is what happens when you listen to the Match Going fans. I'm sorry, because the Match Going fans were begging for someone like Lampard to come in because he, you know, makes the squad motivate. He motivates his players. You know, Mason Mount, Reece James, or he, he's proper Charles. This is what happens when, when you listen to them and look where we are. We're getting worse. Now, coming into next season, you know, when you get when you cure the mentality this season, how is it going to translate next season? Right? You think they're just all, all of a sudden going to be trying to, you know, go for wins and everything? It starts now. You've got to keep competing for every game you play for. I don't care where you are. You've got to always compete. You've got to always win. We're Chelsea fucking football club. We're not fucking Burnley. We're not fucking Bournemouth. We're Chelsea. We need to win. And getting someone like Lampard and only saying, well, we only have nine games left is an embarrassment because we need to always win because that foreshadows what happens next year's to come. Because you've got to keep winning. And for me, Pochettino coming in, you, sh you should have, for me, I'm sorry, you should have brought in Enrique two months ago. Because Enrique was someone who, for me, had a plan, he had an idea, he had a philosophy, and he wanted to come to this club. Pochettino, I, I don't mind the, the guy, whatever, it's fine. But you've got to bring him in ASAP. You've got to start him in the trenches so he can make his way up. You've got to give managers making their own decisions. Managers who, who know what they want and don't know. Because this guy, Todd Bowie, has no fucking clue what he wants. This guy is absolutely hopeless. I backed Todd Bowie in the summer, but he has really let me down with his mistakes. He has a lot of time to make it up. I want him to make it up for me. I want him to succeed, but he's really not helping with the decision he makes. And on this game time, I'm going to quickly say, I told everyone about Raheem Sterling. He's an absolute... I, I said he was finished, but I kept backing him because I want him to work out. But I said, Terry, I said on your show, I was with Ozzy Guna. I mean, Ozzy Guna were watching this the other day. And I said, Sterling is finished. I would have gone for, fought for Gabriel Jesus. I would have fought for Rafinha. I would have fought for Dembele. But no, I went for a finished Raheem Sterling. So it all started, you know, about a year ago. And again, I'll, let me just recap this game quickly as well. This game, overall, 3-1, you know, I'm 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 surprised, as I said, as Arsenal fans said, I think they should have gone six seven nil, and that just shows the disgrace of this absolute football club. And we're losing three one to Arsenal, you know, at home. You know, we, we used to be competing with these guys, man, but, but they're on on an all different level. And our mid today was shocking. You know, I think positioning our midfield since Lampard has came in, our midfield is absolutely all over the place. They are headless chickens. They're running left, right, center. Like no one knows what they're doing. And unfortunately, you got Thiago Silva at the back 
you know, you can't direct anyone. The guys, I'm sorry, but the guys lost. So I think he needs, he, he he's lost, he's lost everything to play. He has, he has no captaincy in him, no leadership. He doesn't know how to play anymore. I think it's something to start fading him off. Kepa as well, man. Like this guy, man. You know, you know how much I back Kepa, man. But this guy is, he's hard, it's hard to start backing him, man. I back family, man. I back my boy Kepa, but man, he has been horrendous, man. Um, so I think all this, this whole team as a general. Don't want to play for this club, but don't want to play for this badge. We're Chelsea Football Club. You don't play this badge. Get the hell out of here. Honestly, get the hell out of here. I couldn't care. I'm glad let, someone's got energy. Let me let me say something as a neutral because it's easy for me to, to talk a little bit about Chelsea. What I've seen today from, from Chelsea, it reminds me of that famous quote. Remember when Sir Alex once said, if you give me Zidane and 10 pieces of wood, I'll get you to Champions League. Um, Lampard has took this team and made 11 pieces of wood. Absolutely atrocious. Okay, Noah's Ark. Just... Noah's Ark. <laughs> no, you, <laughs> you could literally make Noah's Ark with that amount of wood on the on the pitch. They're horrible, man. You see the goals that they conceded today. There was not even a lack of numbers in the box. Every goal they conceded, they had like six defenders in the box, but no one is marking. And I, I, I don't want to sit here and say all oh, these guys are terrible because they're really not. I mean, even with Graham Potter, they had a little bit about them. You saw the, they had more of a structure around, around Graham Potter. They just lacked a little bit you know, of leadership and whatnot. And all the Chelsea fans who thought Lampard was going to be the solution to, to the end of the season because he's proper Chelsea, it just shows that you don't play football with just passion. You actually need tactics on the pitch. These players individually, we can sit here and talk about how, how great we think of Kante and Thiago Silva and Aspilicueta and Kovacic, but this guy, Lampard, has managed to put a collection of players that we all rate into like one of the worst teams I have ever seen. And like you said earlier, Terry, these guys should be happy that there's only four games left on the season. Because I'm I'm sitting here, I'm trying to make of it, like, how can these guys get relegated? And unfortunately, there's not enough games. Forrest needs like nine of 12 of their last 12 points to to, to make it outside. Because I don't see Chelsea winning any games. You make a great point. And something that Matt said that I think I want, I want to throw to um, the other Chelsea boys, foreshadowing or carrying this over to next season. I felt that it was right to get a manager. And even if he says, I want to come in the summer, offer him half a million pound a year more salary, whatever you've got to do, because you could have built up some confidence going into the summer. If you go into the summer with another four defeats, another five defeats, however many games you've got left, I know a new manager comes in with a new feel, but the emotion around that dressing room is going to be an absolute rock bottom. So now, now looking at this um, with hindsight, not going and getting, making Nagsman interview, not just going out and buying him, listening to Richard Keyes, listening to James Corden and bringing in Frank Lampard. I mean, these mistakes could have a ripple effect into next season as well, surely. Terry, the thing yeah. is, yeah, oh it's too much hindsight because, like, at the end of the day, damn if you do, damn if you don't. If you bought someone in at Nagelsmann, everyone had been like, oh, he rushed it. He's just got in another guy he needs in. And then if he brings in Lampard, which is obviously a mistake, yeah. It's like, oh, Lampard's crap. You shouldn't have bought him in. So it's like, at the same time, Lampard is definitely the wrong guy. But getting an interim was the right choice. So I don't believe, in my opinion, bringing in Nagelsmann now or forcing Enrique through the door or even Potter, I'll give you extra money coming right this second. Would it change the outcome of the season? Would it improve the players' form over the last how many months and years? It just would have been like delaying the inevitable. So I, for I me, one set, chase, one set, yeah. One set. For me, yeah, I'm just looking for a reset in summer. So, yes, a big caveat is the, like, the morale and the team chemistry is going to be on the floor. But half these players, the reason why there's no chemistry, there's no morale, they don't want to be here. Or there's disputes in the change rooms. Like, we need to sort that out first before bringing in a manager to like somewhat paper over the cracks and get, what, like, a few draws and wins. Like, there's still, like, deep... But who dictates that, deep. Shay? The manager dictates who stays and who goes. Isn't that right? Or are you thinking yeah, the owners do that? But, like, I want a proper manager... To, not proper manager, sorry. I want the proper, like, position to be put in place for the summer. I don't want to just get someone in just for getting him now so we can get show, like, show a bit of face and, like, maybe get something at the end of the season and get some mental. I'd rather just wait and, like, see in the summer if you could reset the whole football club from, like, where we should have been from, like, last I, I, summer. And, and I, that's how I see it. I get that. Winter surfer, you feel differently. Uh, I, if you've got a, if you've got a house and you've got a broken window, do you leave it two months to get fixed? No, you don't. You get it fixed right away. You get a manager in who knows what they're doing first of all, and gets and starts to deal with the rot right away. 
You don't wait till the summer. Everyone keeps forgetting. Cha- Champions League final is June the 10th. Then there's international games. We literally have five or six weeks for pre-season. And that's not with every member of the squad. We don't know who's coming in or out. I'd rather have someone in looking at the squad, even going to training, who's showing up. You don't bring a guy in who, when you brought him in, you say he's going to galvanise the squad when nearly sure. about eight or nine players were there when he ripped that squad apart last time in 2021. So why would you do that? That's a bad choice. I would have got the manager in, maybe not right away, but I would have certainly got them in right now because I need this rot attacked right away to leave it another four or five weeks. We are so lucky. We and there is the, we don't have 12 or 15 games left. This yep. team shows nothing. I don't want even to sing. sing for me, it's a waste of time singling, uh, singling out one or two players who play bad. All of them. I don't care. Madueki played well, well fine. I, I don't really care. My most annoyance today that was not actually the game because I knew that was going to happen. It was actually people getting excited that we were playing a back four and we were playing more attackers. Why would that make a difference to the game? Clowns. Why would that make a difference? And also, what annoys me is in our group chat, people going, I can't believe Chelsea are this bad. Have we been, have, have you, have we been mute for the past three months or something? So we've been telling you how bad we are. We told you from the last game how bad we are. For you to actually think that we were going to actually do anything today is madness. But I would get the manager in right away. I don't know what the issue is. Uh, maybe they, I, I, do you know? Do you not think the time, biggest but, issue is that whoever on, so comes I, in? I, I just, uh, but this guy, I've said Terry, he's lost thirty-one of his last forty-one games with it's Everton, and he's not a manager. He it's, doesn't have the licenses. He's, but do you know what your them, biggest man. issue is, though? Where whoever comes in has to accept the fact this is his squad. He doesn't get a choice in it because of how much money you've spent. Unless you have some yeah. major, major offload, it's going to yeah. be... Well, I think, I think there will yeah, be major offloads. Yeah, that's what there, the manager will dictate. There the manager will, will dictate those offloads. There will be, but also it's just like, this is why when everybody starts making predictions about top four and who's going to be challenging next season for me, it's just like laughable when we don't know who's going to have what manager, what transfers they're going to bring in, what their outgoings yeah. are going to look like. And when you look at Arsenal and you look at other teams, like one of the things that they pointed out today was like how everybody is singing from the same hymn sheet. Obviously, they've been working under Arteta for enough amount of time where everything is like automatic. That doesn't come in like one preseason with the amount of players that you guys have, the players that you have to come out and all that kind of stuff. So the idea that like and I know we'll talk about this at some point, but like where Chelsea will finish next season, I don't think. Arsenal or like Man United need to be worried about Chelsea spending all this money and getting up to, you know, and we should be worried about them. They need to worry about how to catch up with us because that's not, that's going to take whoever said that takes so much more time than people are making. It's not just about spending money. No, like the manager has to get in, get his guys, figure out who he wants, who he doesn't. And then they have to start playing together. And it, it doesn't, it's not, it's not like a I, I don't five minute process. Yes, yes. Whoever said, whoever said Chelsea asked all kind about Chelsea, you, whoever said, that Chelsea were going to get top four next season. Well, I see it all uh, over my timeline. I see yeah, a lot of people saying that. Well, that. If you well, actually see Chelsea well, fans well, saying well, hold that, on. well, hold on, they need to like, themselves because, like, who, who, I mean, who I, in the panel I see it all the time. Chelsea first of all, Arsenal will be the first team to challenge for the title <laughs> and yes. will be in very on, little I, top four conversations. I can already see it. People well, are saying, well, Chelsea and Liverpool, you need to be worried about them. I mean, you guys will spend money. But there are teams that have stability right now under a manager and they've been working under them. So it's going to take time. I think it's very like not unrealistic that you guys make top four, but it's not necessarily like Newcastle, Man United, Arsenal. Hold on. No one here is sat here saying top four. I got to say, she didn't say that. She just said generally. Yeah, I'm just saying generally, not you guys, but I'm I'm still saying like in general, even if you haven't said that, it's gonna take time, and like I have, like I don't understand why people think it's just gonna be like I can't that, it. and why can't they've waited so long to try yeah, to make a change. Like control. Lampard made y'all go backwards. Yeah, I get that, guys. So oh, I'm gonna go do this, it's Don. It's I'm gonna go do you in a second, bro. I want to do some of these super yeah. chats yeah. first. Uh, one here said, "There's no doubt uh, we're awful, but why bring Poch in now? He'd only get torched by the fans, and we'd be back to square one." Uh, again, I, I, listen. If he comes in and loses a number of his games, yes, it'll impact his win percentage for a while. But this is about one of the things that, that Carragher said tonight in commentary that I thought was spot on. You look at Mahalo Mudrik as an example. This kid should just be told now, 
between now and the end of the season, you're starting every game. Get a rhythm. Get a run. Let's see what you're yep. about. But he drops in. Aubameyang's leaving. There's no point playing him for any reason. At all, this, is what, this is what a manager would have done if they were employed. They'd come in and go, within a, a couple of weeks, and by the way, they, this guy should have come in six weeks ago, seven weeks ago. He'd come in and go, right, that 15 group, that group of 15 I don't want next year. So what you do is you, you send them off to train in a corner by themselves and you, have a, you, you shrink the group in training. Then you turn around and go, right, you're my main 11, 12, 13 players. Just to relax you all, you're going to start the next handful of games, barring disasters. Build a bit of chemistry. And, and you guys also are, are who I want here next year. So you start building that chemistry, that continuity. Uh, Kiris, that's why I think you need to bring up, you, you, you made a mistake, not just because Lampard's shocking, but you needed a manager in early. Like, listen, I wanted Ten Hag in halfway through last season. And what I said we should yeah. have done, I knew Ajax were in a title race. Fuck it. How much do you want a year? 15 million? Listen, we'll give you an extra five million pound bonus if you leave that job at Ajax now and come in. Because how much further could Man United have been ahead this year if Ten Hag had started in December? You, know, you look at Eddie Howe. Would Eddie Howe Newcastle have been as good this year if he joined in the summer? No, he's had an extra six months working with them. So, yeah, I think that's crazy, personally, uh, myself. Uh, this year says Chelsea's collapse reminds... Oh, sorry, we've done that with Franklin Saint. I don't know who that is, personally. Is that a basketball player? Uh, it's no fault. He's a character. Ah, uh, right. Uh, we haven't started. I haven't started watching that yet. It's on. It's after I've finished Waking Dead, Walking Dead. Then real ones, no. Real ones, no. Um, who's taking Todd effing Bowley too long to hire Poch? Mofo is quick to hire Tuchel, uh, quick to hire Trash Potter, and taking forever to hire a proper manager. They, this that man should be arrested. What, what are you saying, Miguel? I told you guys in the summer about Todd Bowley. He looked messy. He didn't know what he was doing. He's kind of, kind of, kind of learning on the job, and everyone's attacking me. Even a couple of weeks ago, when I was telling thing, I get it that you guys want to say, "Oh, everything he's done up until January," but he's still getting things wrong in the sense that bringing in Frank Lampard was not was not the right decision either. You would have been honestly better off with. I know this is laughable, but you would have been better off with Big Sam. <laughs> like this is not even a joke. You honestly would have been better off with Big Sam. He would have got more have out of this better team. Off with Big Sam. What? We wouldn't have been better off with Big Sam. You would have been better off with if that Big Sam, interim okay, manager. What's the difference between everyone? Because he would have at least got Hold you a on, point by now. Big Al, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Okay? You always talk about let people finish. Let me finish. Our point is, if you bring in Big Sam, he gets you an extra six points. Where does that leave us? In the same position, but with two extra positions. It doesn't make a difference. People would have hated Big Sam from the start, and there would have been no point. The whole point of Lampard is PR. And to be honest, I still ain't heard people shouting Lampard. Matt's the first person I've heard to talk about Lampard legacy. The only person I've heard. Okay, he's the only one. So no one's beefing Lampard Bro, or anything. When 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 make, Rory and again, when Rory's when Rory's questioning but, Lampard, you know you know your whole club's finished. Again, I I ain't watching. I wouldn't take what he says. For exactly. Like, I'm, no, so I'm saying as an example of. No, As an example of people who fully would back Lampard. A girl, Rory does not represent the man. I get that. Um, I get that. I get that. Right. I, 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 I know that. I, I understand Rory, what I'm saying. I know what he's saying. Though. I know what he's saying. Rory and the Mandeb. That actually could be a brilliant podcast. You know what I mean? That would be an amazing podcast. Uh, Don's with us. We are going to go back to some more of your super chats soon. Keep hitting that like button for us, people. Any questions you've got about Arsenal, Chelsea tonight, let us have them. Uh, Don, like, I know we haven't really touched on Chelsea tonight because it's really hard to break down we know why you're bad. That the players have stopped playing. The manager's awful. What, what is your take on the situation with the manager? A lot of people online right now are basically saying, just let Lampard go now, bring in Poch. Is that the right move to make? It's, it's a little too late. Um, it's a little too late now. I think the main thing I said to you before, Terry, is that Todd Bowley took too long to, to sack Graham Potter. And the fact of the matter is, they brought Graham Potter in after 24 hours, after sacking Thomas Tuchel. So they're now taking their time, which is, again, creating that snowball effect because you want to decide who you want to bring in. You don't, you don't know if you want Nagelsmann. You don't know if you want Tuchel. You don't, not Tuchel, sorry. You don't know if you want Enrique. You don't know if you want Pochettino. Pochettino. Pochettino is now interviewing us, you know, asking us about more control. He's asking for a little bit more control within the squad. And things are taking a little bit long now. So I think the main thing here is that Todd Bowley took too long to sack Graham Potter. And now we're in the, the mess that we're in because ideally I would have loved for Poch to come in now, decide who he wants to keep, just, you know, take all those players that you don't want and tell them to train with the reserves, train by themselves and just focus on the team that we're going to build with next year. I think it's not doom and gloom here at Chelsea. Like, I know at the moment it's it's bad because, yes, we've got Frank Lampard. This guy's playing a back four when we've got no CDM, we've got no protection in front of that back four. Hence why you're seeing Fofana 
and Thiago Silva looking the way they are. But I'm not going to talk about it tactically because we know that Frank Lampard just isn't levels when it comes to the tactics. We we can see the problems on the pitch. But I think we just have to just swallow it now as Chelsea fans and just, just accept it. This, it is where it is. It's not going to change this season. It is where it is now. It's not going to change the yeah. season. So we just have to wait. <laughs> I, I, think, I think that's a great point you made there, to be fair. Like, it, they're not good. They, they should, but they're not going to sack him. And as a United fan, I want Lampard's Chelsea at Old Trafford because I do, like, I don't want to upset the football gods, but it's it should be three points, but I'm going to go for a nil-nil draw. Um, sorry. So I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry. I'm Terry, sorry. I'm, Terry, Terry, I, mean, I think, I think, Terry. For, I think for the City oh, game, Chelsea should forfeit because they only get three goals against them. That's yeah, yeah, that's a good go shot. Actually, there they're going to concede more. Yeah, forfeit so the games and just lose three 0 I've been, I've been saying this all season. I've been saying this all season, right? Chemistry is such a big thing in football because if you look at Arsenal, they know Odegaard's making that run. He doesn't have to check his shoulder. He knows Jorginho is behind him to play the one-two, play around the corner. When you look at us, we play with no purpose. You give the ball to cover. He's got no idea who's around him. The only player that looked like he was half decent today was Kante. Honestly, I've never seen a member of the traditional top four as they were. The, the, the top six as they became later on down the line. We've all had some bad teams, probably barring City in the last decade. This is the worst for a single season. For a single season. I said this four weeks ago, Terry. Let's go. You're, you're, on, you're on the same page as me. It's, it is the, for a single season, it's the worst top six team ever. And that's not, but I think I don't even think any Chelsea fan would dispute it. I thought we were, I thought we had a, a chance of being it last year under Ralph. Of course, Arteta's first two seasons in eight that are, are contenders for it. But you're twelfth, and probably going to end the season fourteenth, fifteenth. Like, however, the one thing I will say, and I know rivals don't like hearing this, if you if you get this next managerial appointment right, the right exits in the summer and a good preseason, I don't know if you'll make top four next year. But I don't see your season being this bad again. I do think you'll improve from this next year. Yeah, I sorry. really do. Let me let me just say this before any Chelsea fan goes. Go on, go on. Let me just say this. I agree with Terry, actually. You guys can only go up from here because this is pretty bad. This is the worst you, I've ever seen your club. You cannot get it worse than this, obviously, right? Bring in the manager, have some level of patience. And, and this might sound ridiculous, but the reality is you're going to have to a little bit lower your expectations because not Roman's uh, Chelsea anymore. This is Todd Bowley's Chelsea. And, and if he's going to do a project rebuild, some of, the, some of the Chelsea fans who've never really had patience for managers and patience for rebuilds are going to have that patience. And I agree. And I know this is not pointed at you guys in the panel. This is more for the people who are quick to, to turn the trigger on Pochettino if he doesn't win them something in the first season or he doesn't get them top four. You have to understand uh, constant change can sometimes lead to instability, which you currently have. And well, I'll say it out. Well, before I jump off here, is... Chelsea fans to follow a project, if you believe, is actually going somewhere. If Potter was the right guy and we were playing better, there's no way we'd be shying our game out. It's because of how bad it got. Now, that's not yeah. his fault entirely. No, but, yeah. It, like, we'll be realistic. That, that's, yeah. that's with owners. With, with Oli, Oli should have gone after the Villarreal defeat. And I remember doing a video in the summer when he got a new deal and me and KJ were fuming. Mm. And it wasn't out of disrespect to Oli. It was almost, he's there backing him. I feel like, to get rid of him would be more expensive. You kind of had a feeling after we lost to Villarreal, the players are gone. We love you, Ollie, as a man, but you're not the right guy. And then they had to sit with him until October. If we'd have got rid of him in that summer and brought in a world-class manager, our season last year would have been so different. And, and decision-making at board level is so important. I want to do a few of these super chats here. First one says, hey, Terry, uh, if you didn't play, if you don't play the player who are leaving, they won't get good value for them. With oh, 600 million spent. This. He has to make the <laughs> income in transfer. That, that, that's oh. false because Gallagher's already gone. Everton wants him 45 minutes. Like these players, people will take Mount still, even though he hasn't played in three months. So they will take these players, and that's what you got to get rid of them early. I don't think you're adding any more to, to, to Abamyang's or, or Sterling. Oh, yeah, their value. <laughs> yeah, not going to add their value. I, the log logically, I get where you're coming from. But if they drop clangers and bad performances, the valuation is going to go down. Exactly, yeah. So we should stop. Yeah. They have yeah, been. Yeah. We've been losing <laughs> every single game. So right. it's not going to go up. Jerome here says, Jesus Christ, how many L's uh, do you have to add to Lampard's name? Frank L. Pard um, is what Jerome says here. Uh, since <laughs> match day 19, Chelsea acquired 13 points, one point more than Southampton. That is a mad stat. That is Terry, a with, one, with, one, with one, four games in the league since October. 
That's how bad it is. Yeah, and if it wasn't for two shots points, we'll be in the relegation zone right now. Yeah, yeah. I just thought it was ironic that our number thirty-one scored our thirty-first goal, a league goal of the season. Hey, yeah, the, I love a bit of irony. Um, I think we should have just announced Potter would be replaced at the end of the season and let Potter finish out. I mean, it's just yeah. As I think as Don said, you called it right. That conversation is just dead now. It's done. It's been said. We know he shouldn't be there. Uh, Matt. Uh, Gabriel Jesus wanted to link up with Arteta and Rafinha wanted Barca over us. Lee's accepted our offer first. Allow it. Um, our targets got away. That must be to somebody in the comments. No, I no, that was, no, that was me when I was saying that we should have fought for Gabriel Jesus. Like, I, I said oh, I would rather oh, Gabriel Jesus over right, right, Rafinha. Right. Well, uh, money talks, you know, money talks. You know, look at Mundrick. He wanted to go to Arsenal. But does. We, money talks, man. So Fabregas scored 15 at, as the highest goal scoring midfielder in, 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 for Arsenal in the Premier League. Odegaard now has 14. Last time Chelsea lost six in a row was in 1993. Uh, yeah, Odegaard, brilliant performance tonight from him. Um, I think Jess would concur with that. You were screaming my captain at one point tonight. Just to let People that disrespect him so badly in this fan base, and he has 22 goal involvements this season for a player that they always act like never shows up, doesn't score goals, doesn't do anything, useless. You know, it's like he's still only 24, you know, and I know that that's not young, but 22 goal involvements, like, be for real. Most people would die to have a player like Odegaard in a team. Like, of course he has to get better and he's not like, you know, exempt from criticism, but like the way some people talk about him is like actually embarrassing in this fan base. Like, I, I hear you. Uh, Chelsea fans should be on their knees, kissing the feet of Thomas Tuchel. Without him, Chelsea would be relegated this season. A hundred percent. It is true. Uh, Chelsea fans, what would you do, Frank Lampard and the players, if you own the club? I would have never hired him in the first place. So yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to respond. I, uh, I want you to have a channel, so I'm not going to respond. Hey, thank well, you. Terry, Terry, the, sorry, if you could get that comment up, that one that's the where Chelsea will finish next year. I know someone put it there before. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. one, because I want to speak of that one. Yeah, I was going to say, to be honest, for me, right? Everyone was talking about changing that we're not going to finish top four. I think we need to fight for top four. And that's the thing. We should always have an expectation of getting top four. As I said before, we're Chelsea Football Club. Now, I'm not going to say we are going to finish top four as of right now. But the thing is, as Chelsea and as what we, the money we've spent and the money we are going to spend, realistically, realistically, we should be, we should be winning the league with that money spent. Realistically, we should be winning yes, the league. But we're not going to win the league. Right? Yes, the, 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 the Keep talking, Matt. I've got to run to the bathroom real quick. Oh, sorry. oh I was like, what happened? No, okay. no. I don't and, want and, to well, sing the... around, though. I don't want to be on the big screen. No, I think, I think though, I think what it is, is I think Jess is spot on, and I, I, I agree with this. I'm not making any predictions until the uh, until after the, the summer transfer window. I'm really not, because it's foolish to write. It's like I keep hearing, like, oh, Arsenal will fall back. You have no evidence for that whatsoever. Exactly. Right. No, and, well, and it's no, that's what predictions I, I think, are. Predictions think, are all speculations. I think Chelsea fans, I think Chelsea fans should, to, to, to me, I view it like this. I need to see some progression. Now, where, where that finishes up, I don't know. Obviously, higher than 12, obviously, but I need to see progression. Football fans are fickle and they're easy to please. You show progression and good football and winning and you take the odd defeat here and there, but you try and stuff like that, then, you are, then you're easily pleased. You get a lot of time. And if Poch comes in and does that, and I think it'll help him that we're only playing once a week as well to get his philosophy across. I think we can do something like that. So I'm not even gonna I'm not gonna make a prediction because it'd be foolish for us. I don't yeah, know if we're gonna get out yet. Do you know what I mean? No, I, no, I'm not saying that's what I'm not gonna say we're gonna finish the football. I'm saying realistically, as Chelsea's expectation has been for the last 10 years, that it's minimum is the expectation is to get top four. And I will always stick to that expectation, I, right? I will I never drop that saying for the you, club. You have to you also have to take into effect this season. It's yeah, so, so, but I, and, and, and I'm saying as well, I think as yeah, but the thing is, yeah, got, yeah, but the thing is, Andrew, we 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 haven't had a good coach, and we've still got a few right. holes to plug in this team right now. Like exactly. next year, yeah, honestly, as, as 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 bad as we've been, as bad as we've been, when you looked at our team on paper, again, football's not played on paper, right? But when you looked at our team on paper and who was left in the Champions League, a lot of rivals were saying this team could potentially win the Champions League, but everyone kept looking at us to say. No, they're not going to do it because of Graham Park. That was the main reason why. And we've got problems in midfield. We need a CDM, right? We need a striker, yeah? We need a new goalkeeper. Yeah, and I that's didn't... what I mean. We haven't got a spine. We are so, a yeah, we, without yeah, a spine. Exactly, we're, we're a body without, without a spine. So right now, as Chelsea fans, yes, we can't predict where we're going to finish right now. It's way too early. We don't know what's going to happen in the summer. We don't know who's leaving. We don't know who's coming in. We don't even know if we're going to get Poch. 
because this club <laughs> exactly. doesn't surprise me anymore. Why. So exactly. we we can't make that prediction. But if we do what we need to do, we'll we'll push we'll push next season. Yeah, you got you've got to wait. Yeah, until until manager yeah. signings. It's so hard to predict as of right now. Uh, Angel Felix here says our defending looks hectic and accidental as from an Arsenal fan. Uh, do you agree with that, Jess? Your defending looks hectic. We definitely look a little bit like weird at the back like we we were so settled and so confident at the beginning of the season like i think a lot of people have said like 34 percent of the goals that we've conceded have come since saliba's injury and i know we weren't perfect defensively when he was there but there's just like a level of anxiety and stress back there you can just tell there's a little bit of nervousness and you know i think we looked for the most part better today but it's still nowhere near good enough. And that's the next step for this team. Like, yeah. I agree with some people's, like, you know, uh, evaluations of Zinchenko. Like, but he's, this is exactly what was advertised. When we got Jesus yeah. and Zinchenko, I told you guys, I was like, Zinchenko's a crap defender, but when we're in possession, we're going to ball out. Jesus, yeah. he's going to miss big chances, but he's going to, you know, he's going to take us up a level. He's much better than Lacazette. And people are acting shocked that if you have a number 10 as your left back, that they're not going to be a great defender. What we need <laughs> is like a different option, you know, and Tommy asked who was that option, but he's, he's not fit. So I don't know why people are acting like they just woke up yesterday and looked at Zinchenko like he can't defend. Jay, you know? I think you said something the other day to me, which I think is true. If you guys would, would never have been in a title race, but just a comfortable, clear second, there'd be less criticism of Arsenal right now. And I think the holes mm. you've got in your squad, you were always expected to have this year. That doesn't negate from the eight-point lead and those three terrible results before the City game. Yeah. But that's where the holes still are in this squad, you know. And, and even when City have won league titles and Liverpool have won league titles, there's still holes in teams and squads. And I think that that's the problem in, with nowadays when you're discussing football is everything is your shit, sell everybody, get a new manager, or we're brilliant, and it's and fans do this. It's brilliant, it's perfect. I don't want to hear it. No it's middle it. ground. Liverpool fans are the worst on here. When they were linked with Timo Werner and they wanted him, and there was all the yeah. talks about uh, for, for Skype calls. I remember saying to Liverpool fans, oh, so either this season or long term, who's he replacing? Their response, literally every Liverpool fan that ever phoned in said, he ain't replacing anyone. Or is he just going to, well, he's just for the bench. No, 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 he'll work his way into the first team. Yeah, but who will who will drop out for him? Do you think? Why does that matter? They just did, they just <laughs> it was seen as too negative to say, and that's how like fan, so many fans have become now. And I mean, Lee Gunner spoke earlier, and he spoke about how if a manager comes second, barring a manager like Pep with his track record, they should be sacked if they don't win the league. That basically means you're looking at between, anywhere between fifteen to nineteen sackings in the Premier League every season. In practicality, it doesn't work. I mean, how much money would clubs hemorrhage on managers over a five year period? It's all about con it's all about context of okay. the situation. Yeah. yeah. You know what else you know what I'll say about Zinchenko and Jesus though? Like I think what it is is that like they're exactly what we thought that they were gonna be. And without them, we wouldn't be where we are right now. They've taken us to a completely different level. And there's absolutely no way that you can argue against it. Like when people are acting like we would be here without them, they're joking. But what we realize is they're not enough for a title winning team, which is probably the reason why they're here and not at City. You know, because they went up a level and we've got these two players that make us better and bridge the gap a little bit, but not quite enough. So obviously we need more. You know, we probably need a traditional striker. We need a different type of left back. But like the idea that those players can no longer start for us, they're crap. They're no good. It's just a joke. And like sometimes it's like the overreaction, like the way that people go in on our players. I'm just like, like we're so quick to turn on people like mm -hmm. so quick and like, it doesn't make any sense. They're not enough, but if they weren't here, we wouldn't be here because Kieran yeah. Tierney is made of like crackers. Like, do you know what I mean? Like he was never going to play 30 something games. Okay. Like, <laughs> I've, got, I've, got, I've, got, I've got a question for you, Jess, on Jesus. Do you honestly feel that next season, even if you, you know, upgrade and get a Declan Rice, for example, do you feel that Jesus would be that striker to win you the league? Because I, I don't think he would, in all honesty. I mean, I was having this conversation with somebody earlier, and I just think that, like, you know, goals aren't really our issue. You know, they're really not. We're scoring, like, almost three goals a game, you know. So, and this is, like, our best scoring season. When we had Aubameyang at his pump, like, we were, we've scored, like, 73 goals, and we already have, like, 78 or something like that. Like, so... From my perspective, I get that people feel like you need to have a striker that gives you 20 plus goals a season. I get that. 
but there's too many examples of teams in this league playing with false nines and scoring more goals than people with traditional number nines and doing just fine. I think it's more about the system than anything. We need a plan B. That's for sure. We can't just have Jesus. We need a plan B and Eddie and Keddie is not that, but do we need to replace Jesus? I don't think so because I think he's an important cog in the wheel. And like, this is, we just learned how to play this way to disrupt it and bring in a number nine. Like that's obviously going to affect the wingers. They have to learn how to serve that. Look how like city didn't struggle that much, but they did struggle a little bit trying to figure out how to put Holland in the team. And I just feel like we could go another season with what we're doing, bring in a plan B and then see where we go from there. But I hope that answers the question. Like, I don't think we need to replace Jesus to win the league. Is it, was there any update on Gabriel? Cause he like went down like four times. <laughs> hey, leave my center back alone. Yeah. No, Arteta <laughs> said that he's a doubt you know, for Newcastle, yeah. which would make sense, but I wouldn't be surprised if he played. Sure. Uh, this super chat here says, what want, sorry, who wants to bet Chelsea uh, is going to be the deciding factor? I mean, does anyone see Chelsea beating City? No, no, no. I already, I told you, oh, take no the way. Forfeit, Of take course, the you got this. I, like I didn't even see us beating free. Arsenal. I predicted yeah. 2-1 earlier. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if it was I don't see the, us beating Bournemouth. Why would I see us beating City? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. This here says that if this was the usual Chelsea instead of Arsenal, uh, that uh, with that points gap over City earlier, we would never bottle it. Just saying. I mean, if it was the best Chelsea from the the, the noughties, yes. But then if it was the best Arsenal in the noughties, like they wouldn't. I mean, have has it Chelsea either. ever actually went up against this Pep Guardiola side in the league and then beat no. them? Also, can I just say the usual Chelsea no. haven't been in a title race for seven years. So what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so, let me just do this super check. Sorry, uh, Chelsea looks like PSG with lots of players uh, with huge ego. How is Potts going to put his philosophy in this team? I don't know if they're the same. I don't, I don't know if they're the same as PSG. Is in the, not. Uh, yeah. you, you can't get big into the Messi, Neymar, and Mbappe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. And, and, and the thing is, for me, I don't know if you guys agree, but for me, Potts is more of a, a coach. I don't really see him as that manager influence. I think he's more just, you know, come as a head coach, come on the pitch and dictate his tactics. I think he has good tactics, but when it comes to the managerial side, I don't think he's there. That's why for me, for me, I would have gone for I, I, would, I, would dis- I would disagree with that because Harry Kane and Ericsson, they both said that they he was like their friend in, in, the, in the changing room. So I would disagree with that. I don't think... Yeah, that's a coach. Think, you know, they have friends with the coach, but I don't, managers... I think you know, you guys, more, you guys that's why managers, managers, for me, managers are more like discipline. You know, they, I, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I think managers are more... Yeah, but hang on. Like, what, what, what I've dealt with... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Sorry, guys. I, I am really... We, we're right near the end of the show, and I've got to go, but I need to just say on this really quickly. Poch took Toby Odevira and sat him in the stand when he refused to sign a new contact. He took out one of the... At the time, Danny Rose, one of the best left-backs in the league, right? The league, right? When he said he didn't want to sign a new deal, bang, you'll sit in the stand. Potch knows how to do the discipline. Potch mm. knows how to be the friend. And by the way, Fergie was friends with some players and hard on others. This happened. And I use Fergie as, because he's the, the Premier League's GOAT as an example. The only issue with Potch is can he get you over the line in the biggest crunch games? I honestly think you guys will improve with Potch, play better football. The players will love him. But it's whether he gets you over that line to win that major trophy is the big question. Uh, yeah. But um, uh, listen, I appreciate you all coming on and having your say. Viewers, you're always amazing. Make sure you download the latest episode of the Top 6 Show. It's on Spotify now. Scan that QR code on the screen to get it downloaded. Um, Until next time, everybody, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And I'll see you all again.